Good evening, everyone. With Friday night's victory at the McInnes by Michigan Tech, the Huskies became the lone number two team, the WCHA. The Huskies would look for another win at the Barry on Saturday night for the sweep over their rivals and a chance at the McNaughton Cup. Signature Northern entered the game needing to win to keep a chance for home ice. Michigan Tech wanted to win to keep their hopes of the McNaughton Cup share alive as well. A little over two minutes into the first period, Tyler Hainanen gets the pass and drops the puck around Matthias Dahlstrom for the opening goal. It's 1-0 Michigan Tech. Jamie Phillips had a shutout just last night and he was trying to keep the dream alive for back-to-backs. The shot after the turnover in the zone is blocked by Phillips, but Tech wasn't playing around. In the second, Matt Roy sends a shot on target and Jake Lucini redirects it to score. Tech leads 2-0. Entering the third period, the Huskies looking for that back-to-back -back shutout. But Northern Michigan, they have different plans. Cone Adair ends that with his strike around Phillips. Wildcats trail three to one. The Huskies, though, they get support late from Reed Sturos and Shane Hanna to go on a victory five to one, sweeping the Wildcats. How about some other WCHA scores? Lake State defeats Ferris three to two. Bowling Green shuts out the Chargers five to nothing. Bemidji State, they defeated Minnesota State 1-0, so that means that the McNaughton Cup goes to both the Mavericks and the Huskies of Michigan Tech. It's the first share of the title since 1976 for the Huskies. And the top five in the standings for the WCHA, Michigan Tech and Minnesota State find themselves atop. Bowling Green finishes third, Ferris finishes fourth, and Northern finishes fifth. Well, Friday night, the NMU Tech rivalry was on the McInnes ice. Saturday afternoon, it was Houghton versus Hancock. For the Region 17 Division III title in the first period with the Bulldogs already up by one. Hancock adds another goal. Dylan Pablo with a shot on goal, but it bounces back to Nordstrom, who finishes the job. Bulldogs lead 2 to nothing. After the first period, the girls' state runner-up ski team, they were recognized for their accomplishments just this past week. Houghton came out in second trying to keep the game close. The cross is off, but the puck slides to Cole Jepson, who buries the wrister. It's 2-1 Hancock. In the second, it was Hancock starting to pull away. Danny Hill breaks away, beats the goalie, and that puts the Bulldogs up 3-1. Hancock goes on to beat the Gremlins 4-1 for the Region 17 title. The seniors didn't want to get beat by Houghton again this year. You know, Houghton's had a great program the last few years, and uh, the seniors didn't want to let it happen again this year, and I can't say enough about them and the whole team. We knew they had a young goalie in net today, and we wanted to get as many pucks to him as possible with a big crowd here. I'm sure he was nervous. We were in that position last year with our uh, with uh, Dawson and Carroll, you know, being a freshman and everything. So wanted to get pucks to the net as much as possible, and the guys did a good job tonight. The Hancock Bulldogs will face off against Sault Ste. Marie and Marquette on Wednesday. Well, some more high school hockey division two regional finals between Marquette and Midland and Gaylord. In the first period for Midland, it's Mitchell Gardner. Far boards to Garrett Kraut. Beyond a rebound goes directly to Jonathan Dorman and Marquette goalie Travis Cameron couldn't slam the door fast enough. Chemex take a 1-0 lead at 1.32 of the first period. It stayed that way until the third period off a of faceoff. Donnie Schultz and Tanner Carrier create some action in front of the net. Schultz finally solves the mystery of the Chemex goalie Wan Dong Wong tied at 1 at 1.45. We think Jeremy, the audio man, may buy his sports coats at the same store as Canadian hockey commentator Don Cherry with some of that nice look that he had. A few minutes later, off the Luke Bierman shot, Puck dances along the goal line until Caden Paquette smacks the putt into the net at 9.07, and that opened the floodgates. The Marquette Redmen, they go on to beat Midland by a final of 5-1. I didn't say a whole lot. I mean, I have a, you know, 11 seniors on the team and I got a bunch of good leaders on there. And, you know, really what we talked about is just continuing to do what we were doing for the first two periods because once we got one, I thought we'd be able to get two or three. Came in there and was like, yeah, this is our last shot for the seniors. It's really hard to just let your season wind down like that. We definitely had to step up and do something about it. Marquette returns to Gaylord Tuesday night for the quarterfinal and will face Forest Hills Eastern. Forest Hill Eastern edged Muskegon Mona Shores 3-2 in overtime. Some quick scores. Sault Ste. Marie defeated Cadillac 3-2 for the Region 18 title. That means the Bulldogs and Saint Sault Ste. Marie will face off on Wednesday. 
In Division 4 individual wrestling finals for 189 pounds, Hunter Sadler finishes second after being pinned 1 minute and 49 seconds into Springport's Nick Cooper. And in the Women's Big Ten Tournament, Michigan State upsets Ohio State 82-63. Lexi Gussert scored 5 for the Spartans, and that made them they'll face off with the number 5 ranked Maryland Terrapins tomorrow in the Big Ten Championship. For scores and highlights, you can visit us online at UpperMichiganSource.com. Nick. The first team to punch their ticket to March Madness. I won't even let you guess on it because you'll never get it. The Austin P. State University Governors. Go Govs. That's my alma mater. So excited. They started as an eighth seed. They won the OVC tournament the first time in OVC tournament history. An eighth seed wins it all. They're on their way. That's right. All right. Thank you, Ethan. You're welcome.